Hey did everyone, Juan Romero here from Switchwatch and I'm back with another review, a game called Eater on the Nintendo Switch which is a bullet hell. We're going to break this down now and see if it's worth your hard earned cash and your time. Let's get into the story, I have to say I instantly fell in love with it. Uh, maybe it's something to do with tragedy and the instant feeling of wanting to find out what has happened. As Eater, you wake up and find that your family has perished. It's the stuff of nightmares, but that's how this game begins. The only thing to comfort you is a spirit which takes the form of a cat and can speak to you. And its first deed is to offer you a revolver, of course. From then on, you explore this mysterious little world, finding out more and more about what on earth happened here. Everything is cryptic. All the characters you meet kind of speak in little riddles. It kept me interested all the way through especially meeting all of the NPCs and finding out a little bit more about why this is the way it is. In terms of gameplay, Ita is a boss battler, akin to something like Fury or Cuphead, and if you've ever played those games, this is nowhere near as exhausting as it's not as difficult. It's viewed from a top-down perspective and essentially is a twin-stick shooter. Quite simply, avoid bullets while taking shots at the bosses with your weapons to take them down. Most of the time, you'll avoid bullets by using your roll, and most can be beaten by rolling and shooting, rinsing and repeating. Some environments have small walls which you can use to hide behind the barrage, but this is not the type of game where you need to learn all of the bullet patterns from the bosses, although it does help a little. While it does help most can be avoided using the roll, it made it rather too easy for me. At first, bosses don't seem that tough, and through their free phases, they do get a little tougher. As you explore the world, you'll find doors that you can go through straight away to test yourself against a boss. Some doors will remain locked, though, until you've beaten three bosses, and once you've done that, the door will light up, and you can then go in and enjoy a tougher challenge. As you progress, you'll find weapons from the real world, and you'll need to turn them into spirit weapons so you can use them. You'll need to speak to the relevant of an NPC for that. Weapons give you a few differing options in battle from your revolver, shotgun to more powerful weapons. There's also a bomb much like in Zelda which can be used to find secret caves in between your battles. You'll also gain certain powers from a nasty black sludge which will help you in your fight such as having a period of invincibility. Reminded me so much of Venom actually. I enjoyed the bus battles very much and I like how the game is broken up with a touch of exploration in between where you'll need to find maps so you know where you're going. And as each boss is defeated, a light will be filled in the cave where you began. As you beat each one, you'll start to gain more insight into the fascinating little world. You'll find secret caves, you'll see statues of cats, which if you click on will change the look of your spirit. Again, you have no idea why, but you want to find out, and that's the intrigue of the story that kept me wanting to play. There's a lot to be said for having a narrative to drive you through strange cryptic characters, which makes the world and the character you're playing a much more attractive proposition to see the game through. There are a few issues though when playing in handheld. My hands did become tired of having to roll so much with the character and after a while your hands do really ache. The rumble default settings also way too powerful so make sure you turn it down to 5 or 6 out of 10 otherwise your hand will continually be shaken like there's a small earthquake going on. There are 18 bosses in total and should you resist the urge to turn on damage times 2 in the options or invincibility you'll find it a decent enough challenge. Now I understand the options were added here so that some players do not hit a brick wall and I commend the developer for adding them as I suppose it's a different way of having the usual easy, normal or hard modes. But I'm not sold on having an invincibility mode. Having the temptation there to turn on invincibility just means that you have a free pass whenever you want and where's the fun or sense of accomplishment in that? It's not like you've got levels in between or anything like that to give you more of a challenge. I'm all for accessibility, but for me, if a game gets hard, then half the fun is figuring out how to get better and to persist 
until you overcome. But I do understand the developer wanted to give everyone the chance to see this game through to the end. I did have a few problems with the button presses. They can sometimes become an issue. The controls are not as tight as I would have liked. Holding down the button for shooting, for example, allows the character to shoot automatically. However, if you hold this button down at the beginning of a boss fight, it won't register any shots, which can mean that you're an instant disadvantage because you may have already taken a few hits. So just make sure you're aware of that. Overall though, the boss battles are nicely mixed with exploration, story and secret finding with a few little puzzles thrown in here and there to reach new areas and so forth. The audio is stellar in this game. I found it to be one of the best things in how it creates a very atmospheric and mysterious vibe. The boss battles music lets you know that you're in for something serious and even the sound effects are of a decent standard. Take a listen here for yourself. Let us know in the comments down below what you think. Now visually and performance wise, this is a pixel art. Some may love it, others may not. Now I really like pixel art and I like it here. It's not the most vibrant game with the colors used, but that's what they were going for. There's plenty of whites and greens used in the backgrounds, which makes the colors like blue of the character and red when there's blood really stand out, as well as bullet hell shots, of course. And I found that the characters to be well drawn, decently animated with their movement. I especially liked our floating cat spirit and the bosses are pretty memorable too. For those of you that have never experienced a bullet hell, this is going to be a very good introduction to it. Not a game that's as flamboyant as something like Fury, but it's very solid. I had no performance issues in either docked mode or in handheld. Talking about value, the game is $14.99, £13.49 in the UK. It's a mid-tier price point for an indie game, one that I think is worth your investment. There's more to this than one boss battle after another, and while there is no enemies to fight in between each boss, there is at least a bit more to do, as explained in the gameplay section. I didn't find too much issue dispatching most of the 18 bosses here, though, and once the adventure is over, there's little more to come back to as there's no leaderboards, scores, or anything of that nature, no cold play with a friend so it's a nice sort of four to six hour adventure based on your skill level but you could also finish it in under 30 minutes with invincibility so try and not use that now before i get on to my verdict if you are new here make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so we can notify you of when our next review goes live Eater is an indie I fell in love with. Sure, it's a boss battler and they're not everyone's cup of tea due to their, at times, lack of substance in between each boss battle and because they can be utterly exhausting. Itter though adds an intriguing story with a bit of exploration thrown in in between those frantic bullet hell boss battles, giving some respite. The bosses are beaten in rather the same way each time with that role that gets you out of a lot of trouble and the inclusion of an invincibility is nice for players that want to see this adventure through to the end but i don't think the temptation needed to be there honestly having the times two damage option was more than enough in my opinion the audio is stellar and overall a fantastically solid game made by a one-man studio if you cannot wait for a sale this is definitely worth a pickup to support this incredibly talented developer. An eight out of 10 from me. I want to give a huge welcome to all of our new subscribers that have joined us in the last month and to all of our subscribers that have been here since the beginning. Thank you so much for all of your support. We really do appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, leave us a comment in the comment section. We want to know what you think of this game, this review, or anything else gaming related. I'll put some videos up now so you can check out some of our other stuff, especially if you're new here, you might want to see what else we do, such as our bargain videos that we release every Sunday and that physical release schedule that we let you know which juicy physicals are out on the Nintendo Switch once a week, every Monday that goes live. Take care, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Juan Romero. 
Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.